Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's keynotes. I'm Lauren Garrow, director of the TV division at Read Me Them. So welcome to a provocative and important conversation involving four insightful keynotes talking about the topic, will the US conquer the formats world? Although in recent years, formats have been generated in a number of different territories, the US is once again aggressive and successful in generating unscripted formats. And this afternoon, we're going to dive deeply into the subject. First up will be Conrad Riggs, head of unscripted for Amazon Originals. As a producer, his credits include Survivor and The Apprentice. Now at Amazon, he's enjoying great international success with the Grand Tour, featuring the former, featuring the former hosts of Top Gear. He'll be interviewed by Howard Owens, founder and co-CEO of Propagate Content, and former head of Nat Geo Channels. Next, we'll have Tom Foreman, CEO of Critical Content, a very busy production company whose credits range from the case of John Bennett Ramsey to the great food truck race. He's recently started an incubator that will enable millennials to develop the next generation of factual entertainment. He'll sit down for a Q&A with Mike Beal, EVP of Global Development and Formats for ITV. We'll then welcome Paul Buccieri, president of A&E Studios and A&E Portfolio Group. He has extensive experience in worldwide production, distribution, syndication, and digital, both in scripted and non-scripted programming. Mike Beal will conduct the Q&A with Paul as well. And then finally, one of the wise men of the formats business, Paul Gilbert, will offer his insights and perspective. Paul is Senior Vice President of International Formats for CBS International. His experience extends from legacy hits like Wheel of Fortune to the new viral sensation Carpool Karaoke. He'll be interviewed by David, David Jenkinson, Editor-in-Chief of C21. And I have the pleasure to say that a very, a very, very special honor will be bestowed on Paul at the end of the presentation. It's the Golden Award uh, for Longtime Achievements in the Format Industry, and that will happen right after his discussion with David. So now we have a lot to do and lots to hear and exciting things to hear. Let's get started. Please join me in welcoming our first speakers, Amazon Originals Head of Unscripted, Conrad Riggs, and Howard Owens. Thank you. <clears throat> Conrad, it's great to be here with you, my old friend. Thanks for, uh, for doing this, and uh, this is going to be fun. Thank you. It's great to be back. I started my career here, actually, selling and buying international rights on movies and TV shows, so it's great to be back. And it's a real treat for me because uh, when Ben Silverman and I launched Reveille, the first show we did was a show called The Restaurant, which you were uh, a producer on, and you have great producerial experience. I learned a lot from you, so it's a true honor to be here. Thank you. You're aging me now, but that was, <laughs> that was an innovative project for NBC. That was great. Fun. Do you have anything else that, uh, to kick off this great conference? Anything else you'd like to share? We do. This is MIP, and it's global. So um, today we're announcing the ultimate global show. Amazon has signed a deal with Dr. Ruth Westheimer, the renowned psychologist, to conduct a study about intimacy in space. And she is going to be publishing a book exclusively for Amazon, Amazon Publishing, called The Big O in Zero G. <laughs> And in order to write that book, we're going to do an unscripted television show called Space Station, What Happens in the Dark. And we're going to find astronauts who are going to compete on Earth in intimacy building exercises that she will then bring those astronauts to space on the space station where she will critique their methods and methodologies. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, I created a television show to send people to space to compete to get a, a ride to the space station. So this is sort of a dream come true. I've never seen anything like it. You, well, you never have, and you probably never will after this. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, anything else before we kick off? 
We have lots of great shows. I feel so fortunate. Uh, Amazon's an incredible company led by Roy Price, Jeff Bezos. We have the most talented executives. And uh, I feel like every one of our shows is a child. They're, they're so special and dear. Next, next week, we're launching American Playboy, which is the definitive telling of uh, Hugh Hefner. And there's so much that people don't know about Mr. Hefner, including how he led civil rights movements in the US. He funded Roe v. Wade and was behind most of the civil liberty movements and legal progress that was made in America. So that's launching. It's a great story. And then our show with you. Lord, Lord. which is great. Well, before we jump in, <laughs> let me just ask. So, you know, uh, this is one of the largest unscripted conferences. You are um, running a, a big company's uh, unscripted division and making a lot of chances and taking risks and doing awesome programming. What's your state of this business right now? What are you seeing in the unscripted business and how do you think it's evolving? Well, for us, I see nothing but opportunity. We have a saying at Amazon, it's day one. Uh, we're so early in the process, it's early years. We even have our main building in Seattle, it's called day one. So we just see opportunity. We're just getting started. These are our first shows that we've premiered. Uh, and we believe that we have an opportunity to just bring great content to our customers. That's awesome. And you're doing it already, which is fascinating in such a short amount of time. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about the show that we're doing. This is a shameless plug, but uh, Conrad has uh, bought a show from us that we're working on together called Lore. Would you tell the audience a little bit about it? Lore is one of the most popular podcasts. It is or was created by a writer named Aaron Mankey, and he created it out of his garage, basically. Yeah. And it is a retelling of true stories about supernatural events. And we caught the podcast and made the deal at the right inflection point because it's become so popular now. I think it's up to 5 million plus listens a month. But he tells these stories that re literally scare you. Uh, it's like listening to someone reading a scary book or telling you a scary campfire story, but they're all based in truth. So we've assembled what I call the dream team of television. We have Gail Ann Hurd, who produces The Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead, which Amazon has outside of the US, and Glenn Morgan, who was the showrunner on X-Files, and you and Ben Silverman. Uh, we have this all-star team to tell this horror unscripted show, which combines documentary, footage, photos, uh, special effects, uh, recreations into this almost twilight zone telling of stories that are commentaries on uh, us, ourselves as human beings and our culture. Yeah, and, and uh, it's been an incredible experience working with Amazon and your team, an incredibly supportive, oh, thank you. creative environment. <laughs> really, it has, and uh, quite a great experience. And so uh, Lore is based on a podcast um, which is a, a, an unusual source of IP. What do you think of you know, a podcast as a launching point for a show? I love podcasts. They are interesting because listeners take ownership of them. They're not marketed like a movie or a TV show or a product. There's usually very little PR around them, and they're self-discovered, or they're discovered by word of mouth. So when people listen to a podcast, they stumble upon it, uh, and they like it. They take ownership, and they become passionate about it. They voraciously usually finish the entire podcast, and uh, they proselytize for it. Yeah. And that happens when you have great podcasts. And the great podcasts are from people who are passionate. They're making it for non-commercial reasons. Aaron Mankey who created Lore wasn't thinking about a TV show or a movie or anything, or a book, when he created the podcast. And it just uh, was something very unique that has caught fire with uh, you know, the world now. It's, it's and, and become And you global. got in early, you know, yeah. which, is, which is exciting. And, and it's interesting, so podcast is one way to use IP to launch a show, but I also noticed uh, 
from um, the Grand Prix to Djokovic to All or Nothing, your awesome uh, award-winning show on the NFL. That one I am so proud about because this week Amazon earned its first sports Emmy nomination. Which is so, tough. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, but tell me, uh, the value of leaning into pre-established brands that have uh, global identities as the basis for television formats and shows. How'd you decide to do that? Well, it wasn't a uh, premeditated decision. What it was was the really great ideas that are coming to us. Um, some of them happen to be based on these brands like Playboy, uh, NFL team, a Formula One racing team. We just announced a, a show with Team McLaren yeah. about the behind the scenes of a Formula One racing team. But what they are is uh, opportunities to get inside of worlds that people don't know the details about. And yeah. deep access, intimate access, where uh, you get an honest look at extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. Yeah, that's great, great insight. And further to that, um, you know, for the audience here and as you, as you guys continue to grow and launch, um, Talk about um, if someone wants to present an idea to you and your team on Amazon, you know, what's the best way to do it? I presume they call you and not Morgan Wandell or someone else. How does it go? Like, tell us how you're set up and what you're looking for. Well, we've, we've split our television world into two parts. One is the scripted side of the business, and that is uh, on the international side run by Morgan Wandell. And on the international side, that's myself. And we have a team of executives who look at ideas. Uh, and we, uh, I like to be open to anything. I don't want to self-select, self-censor. Uh, you never know where the great, next great idea is going to come from. Most networks, we're not looking for the hit show that came to them. Right. So I think you have to be very open-minded because if you start following the leader, then you just become part of the pack. And we're trying to make a statement and do things differently and take risks, like you mentioned. Sure. And, and, and we're sitting here at an international conference. And uh, five years ago, no one here would be thinking that you're talking uh, leading a global brand that programs for a global audience. Can you talk a little bit about how you do that, what you're looking for? Do you look for U.S. first? Then, like, just so everyone knows, because I know it's uh, still, you're still developing it. That's a, that's a very good question, because when we started, we were, uh, our service was in the U.S., the U.K., and Germany. And I felt like that was an incredible opportunity. Then we expanded to Japan. Then we expanded to India. And then after several years of hard work and lots of engineering, we launched our global service in the last quarter of last year. So now we're available in over 200 countries. Wow. It's really amazing. Um, it's an opportunity. I think it's also an obligation to our customers that we need to deliver content that they care about. It's global yet local. Yep. Now, if we have a customer in Iceland, we want them to care about our shows. Uh, just like a customer in Mexico, right. we don't, we're not producing only American content. Of course. So we look for global ideas. We look for also local or regional ideas. And we try to find a balance between the two. And, you, <coughs> and it's interesting, uh, you mentioned Japan. And the reason I bring that up is because it's so, you know, I'm based in the US, even though we think globally <coughs> at Propagate. But I think of the programming being so different. Um, what kind of like, for example, what are you doing in Japan? We're doing a slate of scripted and unscripted shows. Our first unscripted show, first original, one of the first originals, is The Bachelor Japan. Wow. <clears throat> it's great. The Bachelor Japan. <clears throat> it's the format that you know and love, but with Japanese contestants in Japanese language. That's crazy. And um, <coughs> so, um, and, and, and tell us, because Amazon obviously is a, uh, is a big company, and it's associated with uh, commerce, and yet you guys tell stories that make people 
passionately fall in love with them, and you're you're doing it very well. How do you do? Do people come and pitch you shopping shows, or <laughs> is there any kind of correlation to the Amazon brand and what you guys do? Um, you know, in programming, we don't at the moment produce shoppable TV. We're really trying to produce great programming that our customers care about. So um, we do have a feature called X-Ray, where you can get additional content, photos and videos, but we're really focused on premium storytelling. Right. And so uh, and to that end, <coughs> um, uh, it's interesting, because I'm a big Amazon guy and a big fan of what you guys are doing and your shows. It's uh, groundbreaking and cool and, and stuff that you really haven't seen <clears throat> before. Um, and to that end, you talked about it a little. I know you have uh, Playboy, the Hugh Hefner Playboy story, which is coming out. I believe it's premiering this week. Next week. Next week. I'm Friday. Sorry, yeah, Friday. And, and what else <laughs> do you have uh, coming up that you're, you know, passionate? I'm sure you, you love all your shows, but anything else that you should tell us about um, that, you know, you want to share? Well, after Playboy, we have um, Le Mans. Racing is everything. Which looks insane. Who's <clears throat> producing that? An English company called New Black Films. Great. And they're fantastic. Um, the access is what I think defines that show and the intimacy. Uh, and then there's the characters and the, also the danger. There's some right. real stakes in that race. Um, it is something very special for us. Uh, and after you're also that, doing the Grand Prix. Yes, and then this week we announced a show with a Formula One racing team, Team McLaren. Wow. Which is run by Zach Brown. That also, ha they're having a very interesting season, and the honest access that they've given us, the storytelling is going to be off the charts. And who's the filmmaker on that? It's also uh, another uh, London-based company. Great. So yeah. not only are you programming internationally, you're making shows internationally. Um, we're, it, we're talking to everybody. You know, I talk to producers from Mexico, to Japan, to London, to Northern Europe, to how's Asia. How's your frequent flyer miles? What, what are you, are you They're traveling They're starting to add over? up. <laughs> They're starting to add up. They're adding up? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, uh, well, this is great. I really enjoy the opportunity. Is there anything else that you want to kind of share about Amazon? Just being there and seeing the, the risks that Conrad's taking and working with this amazing team. I have to tell you, it's a, it's a different way to think about TV, yet it brings a lot of the things that everyone loves about it to, to the fore. Thank you. We're just very grateful to have this opportunity, and we are grateful to our customers to give us time to watch our content, because we're really in the time business. Uh, we're not thinking about other networks. We're thinking, how can we give a customer something that they will enjoy spending one hour or more of their time out of their busy day. Yeah. So we just want to deliver value for our customers for the overall prime experience. There's a lot of competition out there, and you guys are cutting through. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <clears throat>